anterior sternoclavic joint dislocation surgical fixation. This is an axle view MRI scan showing an anterior dislocation of the left sternoclavicular joint. The mechanism of injury is an oblique force to the outer edge of the anterior shoulder. This forces the scapula posteriorly and the medial end of the clavicle anteriorly, dislocating the sternoclavicular joint anteriorly. The ligaments that stabilise the sternoclavicular joint are the interclavicular ligaments and the costoclavicular ligaments, which generally prevent superior translation of the medial end of the clavicle, and the anterior and posterior sternoclavicular joint ligaments, which can be seen in this axial view, which are responsible for anterior and posterior stability. When the medial end of the clavicle is dislocated anteriorly, the anterior sternoclavicular ligament is torn and on occasion the posterior sternoclavicular joint ligament. We can see that both ligaments are torn when the joint has been reduced. However, the posterior sternoclavicular joint ligament is stronger than the anterior ligament and on some occasions the, lig the posterior ligament remains intact. So when the joint is reduced, the anterior sternoclavicular joint has been torn but the posterior joint ligament remains intact. Occasionally, a similar configuration occurs, but the ends of the anterior ligament, particularly if this is an acute situation, are still present, so that when the joint is reduced, both the posterior ligament is intact, and the anterior ligament, although torn, has the ends of the torn ligament still present. As we can see, there are three patterns of injury following an anterior dislocation of the sternoclavicular joint. The first is where both the anterior and posterior ligaments are torn. The second is where the anterior ligament has been torn and is irreparable, but the posterior ligament is intact. And the third, which is normally in the acute situation, is where the anterior tear is potentially repairable and the posterior ligaments are intact. There are three potential operations to treat each of these. Where both the anterior and posterior ligaments have been torn, these are actually irreparable, and so reconstruction is required. This is an MRI arthrogram, an axial view, showing a leakage of the dye both anteriorly and posteriorly, confirming a tear to both the anterior and posterior ligaments. The preferred reconstruction that I like to undertake is a horizontal figure of eight hamstring tendon reconstruction. Two 3.5mm drill holes are made anterior to posterior on the medial end of the clavicle and also the sternum. The hamstring graft is then threaded anterior to posterior through the superior clavicular drill hole. It is then retrieved posteriorly and passed from posterior to anterior through the superior sternal drill hole. The tendon is then retrieved and passed through the inferior clavicular drill hole from anterior to posterior, retrieved posteriorly and then passed posterior to anterior through the inferior sternal drill hole. Once the tendon has been passed, the ends of the tendon are then pulled tight. This reduces the joint. The joint is then cycled and the tendon tightened. The ends of the tendon then suture together. This is the final configuration following a horizontal figure of eight hamstring tendon reconstruction for an anterior dislocation of the sternoclavicular joint. This is a post-optive CT scan where we can see the drill holes in the medial end of the clavicle and the sternum and we can just see one of the limbs of the tendon graft passing from the superior sternal drill hole to the inferior clavicular drill hole. The second pattern of injury is where the anterior sternoclavicular ligament has been torn and is not repairable but the posterior ligament itself is intact. For this I prefer to undertake a vertical figure of 8 hamstring tendon reconstruction. A 3.5mm superior to inferior drill hole is made in the medial end of the clavicle and then two drill holes are made on the front of the sternum and joined together to communicate as a tunnel. The tendon graft is then passed through the clavicle from superior to inferior. The end then retrieved and passed into the superior sternal drill hole and out of the inferior drill hole. The tendon ends are then pulled together, which reduces the joint. The joint is then cycled, and the tendon ends are sutured together. This is the final configuration following a vertical figure of eight hamstring tendon reconstruction for an anterior 
instability of the sternoclavicular joint. This post-operative CT scan shows that the joint has been reduced and we can see the superior to inferior drill hole through the clavicle and the drill holes through the sternum. The third injury pattern is where the anterior ligament has been torn acutely and the ends of the ligament are still present and are repairable. The posterior ligament itself is intact. This is an MR arthrogram that shows the posterior ligament is intact, die escaping through the anterior ligament, but we can see the ends of the anterior ligament are present. In this situation, I prefer to undertake a capsular repair, which is augmented with an internal brace device that will protect the repair. The two sides of the torn ligament are then split longitudinally. Plication sutures are placed between the leaves of the capsule and then tied, repairing the capsule and also tensioning it. A drill hole is then made in the clavicle to accept the anchor from the augmentation device. The anchor is then inserted and the two tapes then pass through a second anchor. A drill hole is then made in the sternum, the second anchor inserted and the tapes between the two anchors tensioned, providing a strong construct to protect the repair. This is the completed repair. A post-operative CT scan shows that the joint has been reduced and we can see the two anchor holes for the internal brace device. If you would like to know more about the sternoclavicular joint or any other shoulder problems, visit my website cambridgeshoulder.co.uk or my YouTube channel Cambridge Shoulder.